Another thing that you're going to notice when you start putting sounds inside of your levels is you're going to want to create a space where you go into an interior and you want to stop hearing what's outside. Imagine you're you're walking into a house. You don't want to hear the rain outside or the birds or the passing cars in the same way. You, maybe you want to muffle them some. Uh, maybe the thunder, you don't want it to be as loud when you're inside the house versus outside the house. So creating occlusion interiors is a little bit tricky, and I wanted to walk you through how you could do that, uh, at least the basic setup and how you can get started with that. But that's the effect that we want to try to create. So to show you how this would sound, you hear those bird effects. Okay. So imagine that we walk into a door inside of a house. We don't want to hear those birds anymore. Right, we want to hear whatever is inside. Walk back out, we hear the birds again. This is the effect that we want to try to create uh, using some, it's called audio volumes, but we're going to talk about how we can include sounds based on interior spaces. All right, so let's do it. Um, there's a couple steps that'll make this a little tricky, so I'll try and uh, break these down as best I can. The first thing is we're going to look inside of our starter content. We're going to find a, let's look for starter birds. You can see that there's not really a cue for this. Um, you can make a cue if you want, but again, this is going to be a more customized thing. I want this bird effect to encompass a large part of the level. So in this case, it might make sense just to shape that. So I'll put it in my level. I'll override attenuation. I'm going to make it really big, right? I want the birds to be all the way outside uh, our map right here. I'm just going to turn up the inner radius like that. I think that's going to cover everything. The outer radius doesn't really matter at that point, but you could you probably want to make it sound all encompassing unless you want to make it sound like the birds are coming from a certain part of the sky. Totally up to you, but I'm going to make this really big too. So 2000 for the inner radius. Eh, let's make it 3000. Okay, and then for the non-spatialized, we'll just go 3,000, 3,000, it's fine. Normalize. So now what should happen is everywhere in our level, it's going to sound like the birds are coming from all around. Now again, this is not realistic, right? Because the birds would come from a point in space as we move our head. But again, you can create whatever effect you want based on these settings over here. So now that we have that, what we need to do is to find something called an audio volume to cover the interior space so that we can say, while we're inside of this audio volume, we don't want to hear sounds on the outside, or we do want to hear sounds on the outside a certain amount or whatever. Um, but we need to make that volume, and that's called an audio volume. You go to create volumes, and then go to audio volume, right? And make that over there. Uh, first thing, so that I don't lose it, I'm going to rename this AV underscore, I don't know, we'll call it creepy room. Okay, we'll take that over here. And we're just going to reshape it to cover the, the interior space that we want. So let's make it bigger like that. And this is going to be our interior room that we're trying to create. So I'll make that wider too, like that. It doesn't need to be perfect, right? Um, you just don't want to accidentally trigger it from the outside of the uh, room or cabin or whatever it is. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So when we pass into this threshold inside this volume, we want to occlude some things. Uh, another thing that you need to realize is the priority over here. The priority up here is going to determine if you have multiple audio volumes inside of audio volumes, which one is going to be used. Usually the, in the most interior one, you want to have the highest priority. Like if you're inside of a room, inside of a spaceship, inside of a underwater thing, right? Like you want to define which space you're in. The higher the number, the more priority it's going to have and it's going to play. So I'll put this at five just to make sure that it's really high priority. But then you could have a space outside of that that's maybe three, another space outside of that's one, and, and so forth. Um, but we want to define which one we want to use or inside of it when there's a lot of overlapping ones. So we're going to make sure that we set the priority to something higher than zero. Then down here, just to explain this a little bit, exterior volume is going to be while we're inside on a scale from zero to one, what is the sound of sounds on the outside? Right. So if you want to partially occlude it, you might want something like 0.5 or let's occlude it a lot and say 0.3. Right. Maybe we want to hear it a little bit, but not a whole lot. And you're not going to hear it right now. And there's an interesting reason why. So I'm going to uh, turn off this audio volume, just the Slido one that we made earlier, just so you can hear this better. Scroll down to auto activate. So by default, when you make this, this audio volume right here, you see how we're changing the settings? Like what this should mean is the bird sounds are outside of this audio volume. 
So it should be ducking it to a third of its volume, but it's not. And this is the first big gotcha that you're going to run across when you're trying to work with audio volumes that I wanted to show you how to fix. Okay, so in order to fix this issue, we need to talk a little bit about sound classes and how to set that up, uh, which is a much larger topic. But we'll just look at the basics and uh, just get the setup working so that we can test this. So what you should know is that when you are using a sound, if I um, open up the sound effect over here, you see this sound is going to pull from a certain sound class, right? Now, sound class is a grouping that we can put sounds under in which we can control all those sounds in that group and give them certain settings or features or whatever. So, for example, we might have all the music under a sound class called music. That way we could turn down all the music at once and not affect the gameplay sounds if we wanted to do that. In this case, we want a sound class that handles all the environment audio. So maybe we want to turn down the environment so that we can hear the music better. So this is how you would normally use sound classes. And you can see by default, um, the starter birds 01 sound is not assigned to a class. And again, I'm just working straight off the wave file. You could make this into a queue if you wanted. So if we were to make a queue out of this, um, I'll save that. If we were to make a queue out of this, we would still need to assign the class here, right? So anytime we have a sound effect, we need to put it under a grouping if we want to uh, have that grouping do anything. Now, I'm still gonna keep our sound effect instead of the queue. I just wanna show you that that was also the case. Here's the thing. If we want to use audio occlusion using these audio volumes, we need to turn on that setting inside of the sound class. And the reason is because we would not necessarily want to mute gameplay important audio just because we're inside of a volume. Like we want to hear when the wave spawner triggered a sound effect or something. We really want, wouldn't want to do that. So by default, nothing is occluded by audio volumes. And that's the big gotcha. So what we need to do is we need to create an environment sound class that we can put environment sounds into. And then we can turn on the occlusion for all environment sounds in that class. So let's talk about how to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the drop down. You can see that there is already an environment class made here for me. I think I made this custom, but let's say that you want to create a new one. I'll, I'll just make a, I'll make it called new or something. You can find one of these assets. So I'm just going to select, uh, let's say master. And I'm going to click browse to master and content browser. And this will pop up. Uh, you can see that we're buried deep here inside of the uh, engine assets. And this is where we can define some of our sound classes for our, uh, our sounds. Now, let's say that this environment did not already exist, and that's fine. I can select a different one. Let's say maybe SFX. I can duplicate it, Control-D. I'll call this environment uh, new, for example. Again, you could just make environment if you don't already have it. I'm going to save that. Now, what's going to happen here is if you try to edit this class, like if you try to um, open it up, let's go back here, right? Uh, and let's open up our new environment. What it's going to do is it's going to open up the master and, and you're not going to see this. You're just going to see an empty node structure. What we need to define is our master, like this is all of our sounds is considered part of the master. And underneath that, we want to make a grouping. And in this case, we want to make a grouping of an environment. So it's called, uh, we don't want to make a new one. Um, we want to drag and drop our environment. So let's get it back. Let's uh, do our environment new, drag it in. Um, we actually don't even need these potentially. We'll delete those. We want our master, and then we want several groupings underneath that. You know, we may actually want music as well, possibly, but that's a future lecture. Put that in. The important thing is as long as our new environment, mine's called environment new, if you you, yours could just be called environment. So um, I'll just, you know, pull that back in, right? Environment, other things if you want, but our environment is going to be all of our environment sounds that we can uh, turn on the occlusion setting for. Now, the main point here is when we open up this graph and we click environment, you're going to see here a setting or routing called apply ambient volumes. You'll see that um, this one is applied, right? Che it's checked, but my new one, if I were to add that one that we just created, which you're probably doing, we connect that one. You'll see a new one does not have it enabled by default, right? So we need to turn that on. This means that sounds in this grouping will be affected by uh, ambient volumes. Unreal also calls those audio volumes. It's a weird inconsistency with naming. 
um, but that's what it means. Apply ambient volumes allows us to occlude based off of volumes in our level. So I'm going to delete this environment new out, uh, but basically just want to show you that new groupings do not have that turned on. It is not turned on by default, even, you know, even on master. We would not want that on the master. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to drag environment just like I had it before. Connect that up, have this in, uh, make sure that apply ambient volumes is checked. Save that. Ooh, okay, with all that set up, um, now we have turned on the functionality of ambient volumes for our environment sound class. Still not working, right? You can probably guess why, maybe, if you think about it. It's because our, uh, our starter birds is not defined in our environment sound class. So we need to go to our asset, or my starter birds, go to our asset, Inside of our content browser, whether you're using the queue or the wave is just whichever one you're using. I'm using the wave. Starter birds is marked under master. We don't want that. We want to mark it under environment. So this is a new one that we created. I'm actually just going to um, delete the, the new that I created. I don't really want that. I want environment and yours should be environment. You can create other ones if you want. So uh, we have the starter birds 01 marked as environment sound class that has our ambient volumes turned on for the functionality. And sometimes you may need to restart the sound to have some of these effects take place. So um, for me, if you just hit the play button, okay, right, come in. Hear how it totally occludes that. Come back out. And I'm going to actually put that to maybe 0.3. So maybe you can like barely hear it. Um, maybe 0.5. Right. Something like that. It's pretty good. And you could do all the other things like exterior uh, low pass filter or other things as well. If you have thunder or something that you want to carry through. But anyways, this is how you can start to create some occlusion volumes for interior spaces. Uh, I imagine any of you who are working with outdoors and you have some kind of cabin or interior, you're going to run across this problem at some point. Uh, and this is how you would handle it. So while we're setting up our audio volume, I do think it's worth talking about reverb since it's very closely related to our audio volume. So if I click on my settings over here on the audio volume and at the very top, it allows us to apply reverb. This should be checked by default. If not, you can turn it on and we can choose a reverb effect. So the question might be, what is reverb? If we're inside of a space, the same sound will sound differently depending if we are in like a small cube versus a wide open space or a hallway or underwater or whatever. So we want to give some kind of effect to be processed on top of the sound, depending on the space that we're in. And we can do that in our audio volumes where we're defining the space anyways. So if you want to do that, if you look under reverb effect, if you click this drop down, you'll see all sorts of different kinds of spaces and shapes of rooms. The only big thing to know here is I believe it only works with audio cues. I'll have to double check. I put together a little test here. Um, so I'm going to play a beep sound. I'm going to show you what it sounds like with no reverb. And then I'm going to show you what it sounds like with reverb. And I'm going to pick a pretty obvious one. I'm going to show you what it sounds like with none. And then I'm going to choose forest and show you what it sounds like with forest. So you can hear the before and after. So this is going to be with no reverb. Now I'm going to put it on forest. And this is with reverb. So you hear how that rings out a whole lot more. Different spaces will have different sounds. So I think it's worth thinking about and just assigning a reverb while we're already here inside of the uh, audio volume. And just real quick, I turned my volume up to one. I think the default is something like 0.5. So you can adjust that if you need. Just again, make sure that you are using a sound cue, not the sound wave. I've heard that you have to use a cue version if you want it to be applied to reverb. Now, before I end the video, I want to show you one more thing. It took a really long time to set up all this stuff, but once you have it set up, it's really quick. So for example, what if we had our fire over here, right? Uh, we, let's say we want to include this too. We have a little campfire outside. I'll put it even in front of the door just to show you. Right here, we have our campfire. We'll be able to hear it. Uh, but imagine that we have a door here and want to pass through. Right? So because we have everything set up, all we really need to do now is first, we need to define the sound under the environment sound class. So we need to find the uh, this fire cue that we're using. Find it right here. Assign it to our environment, save, and that's pretty much it. 
You see, um, we have this fire occluded for walls, but uh, that'll happen no matter what, unless we turn that off too. Um, but you can see that our audio volume is occluding our fire as well. And all we really did was we found the queue and assigned these sound class that we already had made. So once you have this created, it's really quickly to just occlude anything you want um, in the sound volume. You just need to mess around with the settings down here once you do that as well. So hope this helps you out.